cool. Welcome, Jocelyn. Thank you for taking the time to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so you recently, like two weeks ago, I guess, finished your eight weeks in the Momentum Builder Mastermind. And so we're just going to have a conversation around, um, yeah, how it went, what you're taking with you, what's changed, all that fun stuff. Um, and before we go into that, yeah, we'd just love to hear briefly, like, who are you? What do you do? The short version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so I uh, landed on the, the term social change facilitator <laughs> and mediator. Um, that's mostly cap encapsulates most of what I do. Um, what was the second question? Mm, just anything you want to share about who you are and what you do. Mm. If you want to add something, that's fine. Otherwise. Yeah, I guess it's relevant to say I work freelance. Um, that's an important aspect of, yeah, why, what I was, yeah, in terms of how I try and organize my time um, mm. and what I was needing support with from the coaching group, from the mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, and I also collaborate with other people. So I'm not just a solo freelancer. I also work in collaboration with, um, for example, a group called The Hum and also other people in Berlin. So both I work both online and offline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And your background, and that's actually also how we met, is in, at least partially in nonviolent communication. Yeah. Yeah. Nonviolent communication and more recently integrating internal family systems mm -hmm. um, and a huge aspect of um, more systemic framework from micro solidarity, mm -hmm. which is a community building practice or framework rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you work with people in person and online, both individually and in groups? Yeah, more in groups these days. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, running workshops and courses, but also gatherings. Um, and I also have a few one-on-one -on -one clients that come through mm -hmm. from the work that I do who are like, hey, I like what you're doing or your vibe. Can you help me out a bit more? Like intentionally with just me nice yeah i'll definitely put your social somewhere so people can check out your stuff as well if they want mm, nice. um yeah so you joined in october beginning of october um just curious to hear what was present for you at that time what made you decide to join the mastermind mm. yeah i guess so i've been sort of building up my um sort of capacity and my skills and my experience over the last, I don't know, five, six, seven years. <laughs> and um, recently I had a shift from a major collaboration, which gave me a lot more freedom to um, find new collaborators and organize my life a bit more around, yeah, a bit differently. Um, so it was kind of a moment of like, hmm, let me reassess how I'm doing things. Is this working for me? And I kind of wasn't really... Uh, yeah I wasn't sure if the way I was doing things felt really sustainable I had a bit of a sense I'm just sort of like following the next thing that came along like yeah yeah that's good because that'll give me more experience or yeah yeah that's good I need some more money or you know more from I'm um, just picking at anything and I noticed there's I was um getting to a point of feeling a bit like concerned that it was um not gonna be super sustainable and it, i there were a lot of things I'm trying for the first time um which felt yeah which is kind of exciting and fun but I, I realized I don't want to be just constantly reinv reinventing the wheel in my work and I just had this sense there must be a better way and it would be really useful to to join the group and see if any sort of principles or um, anecdotes would give me some inspiration for yeah um clarifying what I wanted, like clarifying what I'm doing <laughs> and also making it feel a bit more sustainable and, and solid. Like, okay, this is this is what I'm doing. <laughs> this is where I'm going with it. It's not just random. I have a, a bit more of a solid trajectory. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Was there any, uh, besides the things you shared, any kind of challenge um, or specific moment even where something became clear to you as like, um 
that is not how I want to continue. Mm, like before I joined the program. Um, 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 not, nothing specific, but just a sort of growing sense of like, oh, I can't keep going. I can't keep going like this. Yeah. When's it going to stop? I guess also that going to my, like, for example, going to visit my parents and then just always being on, like, there's no, they were always, they were also commenting, like, when are you going to come visit us and just be on holiday and like, just finding it difficult to separate, to just switch off and, and trust that if I switch off, there will be continuous work and there will be enough money to come through and I, I can afford to take some time off. Yep. I guess like, moments like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense and kind of sounds like it's in the lane of sustainability and knowing what is actually needed for your business to uh, yeah, cover you financially in a way that feels good, nourishing. Yeah. Yeah, and how, how also to to plan it in a way that also cares for my well-being as well. Like not just my financial well-being, but also my mental well-being and so my rest is important to me, yeah, as a principle. Yeah, this is great because it's yeah, it's a <laughs> lifelong exploration for me and also for I think most of the people that I work with this a uh, really strong desire for your work to be uh I like to say nervous system friendly or just mm -hmm. done in a way that feels integrated with how you want to live life rather than like this is the place where I just function and then I step out of it and you know <laughs> need need like several hours to recharge but for it to be like um almost like I'm showing up to work just as I would show up to anything else like it's it's me being me doing me things yeah mm -hmm. yeah nice yeah exactly cool um yeah curious to hear if there was any specific um vision that you had for how the master like what would come uh through with the help of the mastermind into your business life mm. I guess before I started, I had this vision that I would somehow know what's the minimum that I need to do and like how to create that baseline and then what's extra that yeah. could be the icing on the cake. Like just have a bit more of like, I don't know, when 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 you shake up sand in a glass of water and it settles and you get the different layers, like, okay, that makes sense. That's the heaviest stuff. That's the foundation. And then there's the lighter stuff that takes longer to settle. Yeah, just the different layers of, of what I'm working on and I had it more I had a vision of how I would feel like that I would feel like I could breathe and especially like um into the future that the future would feel less unknown I mean it's always going to be a bit unknown but that I had a sense of I can relax now because I have a some plan about the future yeah mm -hmm. Uh, like not, not feeling daunting or like like I think the unknown can both feel exciting and really scary mm -hmm. depending on like how how I'm positioned myself and how I don't know like ready or prepared I feel for yeah the yeah exactly cool. yeah so, yeah nice so then you join the mastermind how was, uh, yeah, how was it for you to join? How were the first weeks? What was your sense as you were kind of uh, easing into it? Mm. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I, I enjoyed, like, the... I think I found it helpful to have some... Both, the, like, the group time and your reflections and also topics from other people but also having the theory like some of the video presentations that you shared I think I remember specifically a, a moment of like oh yeah awesome when you talked about this the barbell theory and like it's I it really was a moment of like ah that's helpful when um I think something when you explained it I realized that um I had a lot of weighting of my projects were on the sort of high risk end and not so many things on the low risk and that's what the feeling came from from like oh I feel like I'm always doing something new like it's risky because I don't know if it's going to work out 
And that's where the fatigue was coming from. Like there's always a sense of, I don't know if it's going to work. And I realized, ah, that's it. I want to actually put more things on the other side, like to move some of those things at a higher risk into feeling a bit less risky, more reliable, um, either through doing them, like making sure I repeat them or finding easier, like um, feeling more sense of guarantee that I would have people returning or that there would be enough people, participants in those offerings that I would put out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that gave me a sense of clarity about where I could, what I could work on to make it feel more sustainable, to make everything feel more sustainable. Yeah. Um, yeah that was one thing. Nice. Yeah. I remember this aha moment of like seeing more clearly what you can do to make your business more reliable rather than being in like a, <laughs> um, like trying a lot of things, but not really knowing, uh, not really having a clear sense of like, ah, it makes most sense to focus on this as opposed to this because of those reasons. And yeah. Yeah. I had the sense that the barbell strategy and this understanding that some things that in business, it's helpful to have some things as like high risk, but also with high potential and then other things, low risk, but also lower potential, just something that you can more rely on. And that if we only have like the high risk stuff, everything feels stressful because they have to turn out well. Yeah. Because like I have stuff on the reliable, I'm much more relaxed with like those high potential things, which usually has a positive effect on those things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good to balance it out a little bit more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, yeah any other aha moment that you want to share um, things that became more clear in the process um, a subtler one but still an important one was more on a sort of being level um, which I think there was one session which another participant was talking about like not knowing if it's ever enough and we were talking about enoughness and that's the thing with being a freelancer it's just like how do I know and it's complete you know it's like an artist's work is never done um and how do I know it's okay to just relax now? And I think I, I had a moment through that conversation where I realized like, actually I'm I'm good. Like, <laughs> I think there's a moment where you were like, how much do you actually have? Can you actually relax and rest over the winter? I'm like, yeah, do you actually have enough money to get me by until the end of my winter vacation? And that was like, yay. You know, it's just very simple just to get with the facts and, and just look at it. And like, I, I did, yeah, it took one week. My task was to, um, just get my my budget my budgeting thing on on uh, YNAB. I like this. You need a budget app, so good. Um, and uh, a bunch of us on the course were were experimenting with that for the first time. Um, I've used it for a few years, but yeah, it was good to just refresh it and get clear. And I realized, oh, I'm actually actually good. I actually don't need to stress as much as I need to. Almost like this fear based projection that I should be doing more. Or um, yeah, and that was. That was helpful just to settle and to trust. Yeah. Particularly having gone through the first aha moment and then knowing like, okay, yeah. I know where I'm going to. Yeah. And I know that now I can actually relax. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love this. That Cause I think it's one thing to just uh, surrender into trust without doing anything and just like, hoping things will turn out well. And the other thing is to actually, you know, take a clear look, make sure that your resources, your time, energy, and so on are invested in the right places and then to relax and be like, yep, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and towards the end of the mastermind, you shared um, kind of your plan of the different offers uh, that you wanted to do moving forward. Can you share a bit more on like how how was that shift for you from like, you know, juggling these many ideas and projects that you have to kind of simplifying and, and having a clear sense of what are the core offers you want to focus on? Yeah. Yeah. So this was great. This was like, oh, I know, yeah. you know, <laughs> I have a, a plan that's still flexible. I could basically use that barbell theory to look at what are three, three projects that I want to create as staple things that I can just really iterate on. And as you said, like to get, um, to get more data on by doing them a few times and seeing like how reliable are these projects? I'm not going to make them more reliable. Um, yeah, 
so having like basically actually it's four offerings like basic program intermediate program while the in-person thing's happening and then the deepening skills course in conflict and it's just like to do that like maybe in three rounds and I planned and when I'm gonna have my breaks um just felt really uh like something to lean into to relax against and already I've had to adjust the plan but that's okay I just know that like I'm creating rhythm um in the year and rhythm is something that we can that they can like like jam into <laughs> yeah yeah I'm hearing some satisfaction in like how the, the offers kind of uh lead into each other like how how your offer suite makes more sense yeah 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 and it's not that there's no space for anything else to happen around it but it was just good to get like that's the core of what I'm doing and if I do that I'll have enough income also to get by and I know it's sustainable so just throughout the course of the eight weeks it just like ch -ch 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 came to that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's a great point that you just said and um, you still have energy available for other things it's not like you're only going to do that but the, yeah that the base is in place yeah and yeah i think from that we can go into kind of opportunities where we don't know how they will turn out in a much different way mm -hmm. yeah yeah sweet um what would you say so after those eight weeks if you look at where you were when you started out and then where you are now what mm -hmm. jumps out to you is like the biggest difference you're experiencing both externally and internally mm -hmm. one I guess is like a sense of clarity and focus um yeah also I'm just noticing how it's also when you say externally it's also inspiring others around me <laughs> i've been telling people about what i've been doing and i have a bunch of freelancer friends and they have similar problems and i was like why don't you just make a a rhythm or so or yeah like you have so much content so there's um yeah a sense of confidence in what i'm doing and a sense of like my nervous system is more relaxed and trusting in the process yeah yeah and also it's like, because I feel more trust in my financial resilience in the next year, I'm also just noticing, feeling more like, like just my, the way I'm using money isn't quite so like when I'm giving it, it's not like, ah, I don't know if I have this, if I have this to give, I have it to give now, but what if I need it for the future? It's like, no, I can give now. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, is there any any particular win that you feel can be big or small that you feel proud of having accomplished? Mm. Mm. I'd say I'm, I'm just proud of showing up and actually asking, like, you know, putting my questions in there, even if it's just like, David, I don't know what the next step is, you know? Um, that was just always helpful. I think I got more out of it the more I put in um I'm glad that I um took some time in in each week to um go through my intentions and follow up with those um yeah I'm also glad for not like overburdening myself for telling myself I'm gonna do loads of things before the next week but just what feels manageable mm -hmm. um yeah just showing up mm -hmm. so like the consistency mm -hmm. cool yeah um what would you say to others who would like to make their business more sustainable um yeah kind of find more structures that support them in um yeah doing what they do in a more nervous system friendly and uh mm. financially smart way like what would you tell them like how to start at this or yeah mm -hmm. I think I'd say like to start with, like clarify what quality, what would a good quality life mean for you mm -hmm. and build your business around that. Like for me, it meant one month off in winter and one month off in summer mm -hmm. and a week in between in the other seasons and the, at least this much money coming in per year. And then I know I can pay everything. And 
<laughs> and then create space for magic. Nice, love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, curious to hear from you. Um, what's coming up next for you? Like, obviously, there's the winter break. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything that you're particularly excited about, or kind of already sensing as like a next step? Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Really, like, clearly doing my winter break and like not working in that time. Um, yeah really allowing myself that is is a is a good not non-doing thing that I'm gonna do. Um yeah and I'm looking forward to like I'm setting the calendar with my collaborators for some of our projects next year, which are some of the ones that are part of my rhythm. And just navigating that with them and seeing how I can do that in a way that yeah is like somewhat flexible with my plan but still is like keeping the basic principles in there of like that I do I feel like I have a rhythm <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great yeah I, I really loved how you said you have a plan that is still flexible and it's not like it's not a problem to adapt it mm -hmm. this understanding that we tend to have about plans is like they're meant to be executed exactly the way yeah set up rather than like hey this is a direction and as new information comes in i'm gonna uh, adapt yeah yeah exactly sweet beautiful um yeah any anything else you'd like to share about our experience your experience in the mastermind that we haven't touched on it feels important to mention before we wrap up mm -hmm. um It's just that I really appreciated that there was like a great group of people who had many like topics that overlapped with mine and just felt like a really easy space to be bringing questions and discovering them together. And I also really appreciated the personal anecdotes that you brought in as well. Mm -hmm. It felt like this environment where you can bring your, you've brought your experience and you're also figuring out as, as you go with us, like there's a sense of companionship along it all. And yeah, I like that. No prescribed answers necessarily, but some like good questions and which helped me find my own. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it was great. So enjoying uh, the presence of other participants and seeing a lot of parallels or yeah similar questions and, and gaining a lot of value from the questions that other participants were bringing in as yeah. opposed to like I have to wait for like my questions so that this call becomes valuable to like yeah most of totally. the topics actually apply to everyone yes exactly and then really gives a sense of like oh I'm not alone with this and we're all figuring it out yeah, I think the sense of companionship is really, hmm. uh, really valuable. Like, but like, always understated or underestimated. But yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, it's come up several times. Also, after you left, just the sense of, you know, it's it's quite a unique path to want to contribute to something bigger than just yourself want to build your business in a financially successful, sustainable, nervous system friendly way, um, you know, following a very unconventional path. So it's so nourishing to come together with other people who just have the same questions and um, at least to some degree, new answers. Because also what I've known in my past is, you know, certain challenges or limits no one in my social circle could kind of surpass and then just assuming, yeah, that's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> um, yeah, this is one of the things I really enjoy in the mastermind is like the sense of, Hey, it's, it's doable. Like it's possible. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not that hard. I mean, it takes dedication, but it's, it's, it's totally doable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Well, thank you, Jocelyn, for for your time, for yeah, sharing your experience. Um, I look forward to all the things that 
you are creating and uh, will create. And yeah, curious when our paths will cross again professionally. Yeah, <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks, David.